What's up, guys? So, oh my goodness. I'm trying to find a... Uh, sorry about that. Okay. So, this is Leo, and he's all dry now. Uh, it took a little bit longer to dry him than, than I expected. He's still got a lot of this dead undercoat. You know, because um, around the fall, and then the heart of winter, and then the spring, and then right in the middle of summer, um, they go through these coat changes, and because they don't shed like a, a lab or a double-coated dogwood, um, we have to comb out the dead hairs. And if we don't, we don't get a nice um, soft texture, and also it takes forever to dry. So I was combing all of that out while I was drying them, and now he's all dry, he feels really nice, and it, you know, it was worth the extra effort because now he's really soft and fluffy and I'm gonna be able to do a really nice haircut on him. Uh, let's see here. Maybe I should this up a little bit more. Uh, you know what, I'll put it over on this side here. There we go. And that way you can get a better full view of what I'm doing. So first I'm just going to comb out his coat. Now that he's all dry, just give it another good comb through so that the clipper blades... So I'm going to be using the O comb, I mean one comb. Hey, what's up Chris? So this is a half inch comb. Um, if you're dealing with millimeters, it's 13 millimeters. And I'm putting it over a 30 blade, buttercut 30 blade. And in order for this to go through the coat smoothly, I have to make sure the dead hairs and all the tangles are all worked out. And that way, I go, you know, the way to do that is go through with the comb and make sure the comb is able to slide through the coat easily. There we go. I'm also combing in the direction that I want the hairs to lay. So further, you know, just always re reinforcing, you know, teaching the, the training the hair to lay in the different angles that you want to cut in. So there we go. But yeah, it's nice of you to join us, Chris. Chris R. It's good to have you. Alright. So now that he's all combed out, feeling nice and fluffy. I'm going to go ahead and start doing the, setting the length. Make sure, okay, there we go. Alright. So I like to start in the chest. He's, yeah, he is beautiful, right? So this is a Klein Poodle. So a Klein Poodle, um, well, they call them Klein Poodles in Germany. In France, they call them Moyen Poodles. And this is all, I, this is all taught to me by his owner. But anyways, they're a little uh, shorter. They're a little shorter than standard poodles, but they're much bigger than toy poodles or miniature poodles. All right, so I like to start here under the, under the ear and get the neck and then go down. But I'm gonna leave all of this in the back of the neck. So I'm gonna leave all of this behind the head so that I can scissor that in into the shorter coat. Now I'm going to skim off the shoulders here. So that skim off the shoulders. So again, I'm going to leave all of this in the back of the head. And then just right here, like right where the shoulders are. And then skim off to blend it into the into the legs. Because the legs we're gonna leave a little longer. And if they loop through that, you just pull one leg up.
So from here, from the shoulder to the back of the elbow here, I'm doing a 45 degree angle this way. But then from here, I'm doing a 45 degree angle into the chest. See that? And then right here at the top of the shoulder blade is when I'm going to start on the back. Following the natural angles of the dog. And then here. so you can see it better. There we go. So on the inside of the legs, I like to go, you know, down here, kind of where the bend is, make sure it's all short and clean down here, the inside of the legs, and the back of the legs here. Side by side, the difference. This side is a little neater side. And we're going to do the same thing on, on this side here now. So, let me get him to move a little bit. No, just... Okay. There we go. Same thing, just gonna comb everything. And they say comb up, you can, but you know, there are other groomers who say never comb up. So just gotta decide for yourself. Any questions? All right. Thank you. 
And then here, I'm gonna go inside into the leg. Okay. So same thing on this side as the other side, into the leg. And then I'm just going to work from the front to the back here because that's what I'm more comfortable with. So put the ear up, right, right under the ear. I'm doing the same thing I did on the other side. Top of the top of the neck here, we're gonna leave that long so we can scissor that, you know, use the scissor. Okay. Okay. And even if you do see some like clipper lines, you know, I have to just remind myself I am gonna go through with scissors and trim everything up and shape it all up nicely anyways at the end. So, you know, you don't want to spend too much time going over and over the same area to try to get rid of the clipper lines. You know, the idea of the clippers for me is to just get all the hair about the same length as quickly as possible, right? And it's not really to finish the haircut with, because we're going to finish the haircut with scissors. So for me, I just have to remind myself, even if I do see some clipper lines, it's okay. The idea is to just get all the hair uniform as possible, you know, about the same length. And then we're gonna go through, well, I'm gonna go through, <laughs> I don't know why I say we, but I'm gonna go through with the scissors and trim everything up nice and neat. Before we go. Okay. Make this leg and just kind of skim. There we go. But just to shape it up a little bit. There we go. So whenever you go reverse, whenever you go up, then it's gonna give you a shorter cut and going with the grain. So whenever I wanna go a little shorter, like in the back area, there we go. And just skip them off. There we go. So now that I have his body clipped, now I'm gonna go on to his legs. 
And his legs, I did a half inch on his body, which is uh, 13 millimeters. His legs, I'm gonna do much longer. This is seven eighths of an inch or 22 millimeters. So nine millimeters longer. And I can show you the side by side comparison. So this was his body. This is gonna be his legs. See how much longer that is? Not too much longer, not too much longer. You know, I mean, let's see. Side by side, well, in front, yeah, there we go. All right, any questions? No questions, all right. <sighs> Better it means that this is super boring and no one's watching, or I'm doing a super good job explaining. <laughs> oh, you're okay, buddy. I guess I'm just see the feet and what I'm working with here. There. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go down the glass. Okay. Now the inside of the legs and the back of the legs, again, if you go against the green, it's going to give you a shorter cut. There we go. So I'm going to go reverse to give it a shorter cut, help it stay clean, you know, give it a cleaner look back there. Just on the back of the leg and on the inside. And then go back down. There we go. Nice and neat and clean. And then everywhere else, I'm going to go forward. You know, I'm going to go with the lay of the hair. Since it's not taking much off, but it is taking enough off to give it some shape. And then I'm gonna scissor, use scissors to you know shape it up even more. Make sure it gets all tidy. I know there's no hair, straight hair sticking out. There we go. Same thing. So with the with the back legs, because I went shorter on the back side and the inside to help balance the dog, to give it a more balanced look. On the front leg, I'm going to go with the grain on the back, and then I'm going to go against the grain on the front, see, to shorten up the front of the leg. That way they're shorter in the back, shorter in the front, and it gives it a nice compact look. So on the front of the leg here, I'm going to go up and then back down. And that's going to give me a shorter length on the front of the leg and on the inside than on the back of the leg. It's all about symmetry, balance and symmetry. So that way in the, in the back leg, see the front leg here, now the front side is a little shorter, right? And on the back leg here, and on the inside, it's a little shorter. 
So the front is a little bit longer than the back. The back is shorter. Right? And now the front of the leg is a little shorter. So that way it gives them a nice tight look. It, it's more balanced. Okay, same thing for this other leg here. Oh. There we go. So the same thing on this side. Look on scissor up his head. So I like to start with the head and then. Oh, I okay. Alright, so. Okay. Here. So with the head, I like to start with the eyes, right around the eyes. So what I'm going to do is comb right in front of the eye. And we want to keep a really round, fluffy teddy bear look. So. I'm not gonna scissor too much, just right in front of the eye here. Just to open up that, that eye so we can actually see it. There we go. There we go. There we go. So now we can see his eye a little better on that side, see? So then, okay. So then we're gonna do the same thing on this other side. Comb the hair up. And then I'm gonna put this down because I gotta get a good, good hold on his head here. Right in front of the eye. And I like to do it at like a 45 degree angle there. So it's like a triangle after you do both sides. And that way as it grows out, it grows out to a nice little fan shape over the eyes. Okay. Let me turn that down just a little. 
so you can see you guys. There we go. So now you can see the eyes on both sides a lot better. So now that we got that, there we go. All right. I like to do it with with thinning shears, right between the eyes. So now that we got that, I'm gonna go ahead and comb the hair up and forward and get a nice round visor going right over the eyes. Okay, so come all the hair forward. And then, there we go. My curve shears here, come in a nice round shape. I'm tempted to cut right here, but I'll get to that. Right now, I'm just yeah, I gotta make sure I stay on task, stay focused, and just work on the eyes, the visor, because we'll get to the cheeks. So I just gotta remind myself to work section by section. Don't jump around. So now we've got a nice round visor shape. See, you can see his eyes. Okay. There we go. See that? Oh, my hands totally, my arms totally blocking it, huh? Um, maybe I'll put it over here on the side. Uh, okay, so that way you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just making sure I scissor it in nice. Not too big because um, they say that when it's too big, it makes them look like George Washington. <laughs> so, but then not too narrow because when it's too narrow, then it makes them look like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> All right. So we don't want Abraham Lincoln or George Washington or any of the dead presidents for that matter. We want him to look like Leo, the nice round teddy bear, right? So now it's starting to come together. Okay. All right. Oh, this is a comb. This is four. Okay, so now that I want to get the top of the head, then I like to go ahead and bring it, like, uh, do the back of the neck here to blend it. 
Make sure it's nice and blended. shape almost like you're you're um, trying to make a helmet you know like he's wearing a round helmet my own motorcycle helmet kind of so the the ear is going to be like the side of the helmet so you want it nice and rounded right into the head almost like a Bichon ear like you're doing a Bichon ear Now the front of the muzzle, I have a little trick, so we'll, we'll get to that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay. Clean the ear out. Make sure it's all nice and neat down here. <laughs> yeah, this is why um, I feel like it would kind of be boring for me to do human hair because, you know, humans, they would stay still for you. <laughs> like, can you hold your head right there for me? Nah, 
<laughs> nah, ain't gonna. Why not? Don't wanna. <laughs> but alright, this reminds me of dog grooming. <clears throat> but yeah. I'm just very interested in everything that you're doing, you know? And also, it's, you know, it's his body. He's probably concerned, like, oh, don't cut me, bro. Like, don't worry. I'm not gonna cut you. See, so this side, see how it's coming in? Nice and even on both sides. Yeah. All right. So he's probably thinking, don't cut me, bro. And I'm thinking, don't move, bro. So on the back of the neck here, sometimes you gotta flip the shear upside down so that you can get that nice angle that cut that you want. There you go, without digging into the coat, you know, making dents, no dents. <laughs> All right, hashtag no dents. All right. Starting to come together. Remember to breathe. I catch myself holding my breath a lot. <laughs> you just gotta remember to breathe. You know, because it is it's kind of a little bit uh, you know, anxiety building because you're working with a dog that's moving around, sometimes unpredictably, unexpectedly, and you're snipping away with these sharp scissors. So, you know, it's like you don't want to make a, a wrong cut and make a dip or a dent in the coat. But then again, you don't want to make a wrong cut and cause an injury either, you know? So there's a few different um, points of anxiety. <laughs> so here's my little trick for the front of the muzzle. Just comb everything forward and then just cut straight down. I know it seems like, oh, what? What did you just do, right? But trust me, once you comb it back, everything looks nice. And then you see the little hairs that stick out and then you trim it up. There we go. So now I can go ahead and round everything up with the blenders. All right. So he's got a pretty nice shape to him now. Look at that. You can see his eyes. So now I'm going to go through with these blenders. These are by Foxy Roxy. Um, I forget what this one is called. Anyways, uh, Boomers. I think this is a Boomers. So now I'm just going to. Really shape it up. And these aren't like thinners, these actually do cut. So you want to be careful, you don't want to bounce around too much. You can bounce the thinners around, but with these, you know, if you are going to bounce, bounce it um, 
intentionally, you know? Because these do make the cut lines. So you want to use it like scissors. Shake everything up, get a really nice shape, tidy everything up. Tidy up the bottom here. Sometimes when I go through with the camera and look at it, <clears throat> the camera will show me like hairs that I missed or sticking out or you know maybe uneven or lopsided. So I'm gonna flip the camera and take a look at it through the camera lens. It's Leo. So it's looking pretty. <laughs> Thank you. It's looking pretty good, right? There we go. Yeah. Blended nicely here in the back. All right. Good job, Leo. So I see a little hair right there over his eyes, but everything else looks pretty, pretty good. There's some stray hair there. Okay. Looking pretty good. So his head is almost done. Well, pretty much done. So. Nice. There we go. Look at that. Awesome. So the head is pretty much done. Oh, I see. There we go. Now time to do his legs and feet, and he's all done. So, good boy. All right. I can also go through and kind of clean up some of these clipper lines on the body here. But oh, I got a, I got a little trick for the clipper lines. Um, when you don't really have to use your scissors to clean it up. But I'll show you that in a moment. So I like to start with the back legs and start from the bottom up. So I'm just gonna comb everything. Okay. 
from the bottom up. So here we go. There we go. Oh, thank you. Karen says, beautiful, thank you. Le Leo, yeah, Lee says, Leo is so awesome, nice. What, how are you, Lee? It's good to see you. Okay. So I like to lift up the foot and just kind of tidy up the bottom here. Not too much, just the bottom. I'm gonna lay it down, and then I'm gonna scissor the round foot. Got a foot there. Now that we have the foot rounded, a nice little round foot scissored in here. Now we can move up. There we go. So now, what I like to do is make sure the back side here is nice and neat and trim and straight. There we go. And then, Tighten up the ankles here, that honk area, and here especially, I want a nice, clean bottom area, but also here, I want it nice and angled, right? So angle it right in, nice and curved, you know, and tight, tidy. There we go. Make sure all this hair is even, nothing sticking out. There we go. So this side is nice and neat. There we go. Now when I look at it from this side, I can see hair sticking out. So tighten that up. All right, so now that back side is done, I just got to do the front side here. sure it has a nice curve to it see that so we want we want to make sure that this curve here is highlighted so back here like that and then here like that so that way you know it, the leg it looks like it bends effortlessly see that so the natural angles of the dog you know the dog's bone structure pretty much we're highlighting the dog's bone structure there we go. Clean up 
this side here. Now that that back leg is done, I'm going to move forward. Make sure this underside is nice and neat. Get all the straight hairs. As I'm scissoring, I'm scissoring at a 45 degree angle. See that? Sorry, I know I shouldn't jump around, but I just saw the hair sticking out there. <laughs> so now we're going to do the front foot. So we're going to brush this out. Maybe I can turn the up here. There we go, so you can see the front. And he's a bit jumpy for his front legs anyways. There we go. So same, same thing, I like to start with the bottom here. Tidy up the bottom. I did shave the pads with the 30 blade before the bath, but you know, after the bath, once you blow dry them out, you'll see some hair sticking out that, you know, wasn't sticking out before. So then I put the leg back down, and then, oh my god, since he moved, moved around. Okay, so now, Go around and trace a round shape with the scissors. There we go. Then, after I do that, I like to just go ahead and pick the foot back up and clean it up a little bit now that I got the shape. Just tighten it up. Use the same angles as I was doing before when I was clipping, right? And just trim away any of these hairs that are sticking out. You know, I want a nice tight chest here. So, yeah, this way. There we go. Okay. Oh, it's like lifting a ton of bricks. Okay. So, nice tight chest. I mean, neck and chest. Up the back of the legs here, make sure it's nice and straight. Tidy up the sides. Good boy, Leo. Get the inside here. There we 
Oh, duh. No. The front leg is done. I can use the blenders to kind of blend it in a little bit better for finish. Inside of the legs. Oh, you couldn't see that. Did you? There you go, buddy. So the inside of the legs, you want to make sure it's nice and tight and straight down. All right. So give me the hairs that stick out. Same thing for the other side. Okay, which way do you go? There we go. Let's do the same thing for this other side here. So same thing, I'm just going to tidy up the bottom of the foot pad here. And you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. This is just, you know, what I've gotten comfortable doing it, doing it this way over the years. So you can come up with your own way to do it, you know, just, just showing you how I do it. Because this has a double, see that? It gets kind of hard to flip it back around this way because it gets caught like that. So that's why I have to flip it out that way. But there we go. <laughs> but that's also why I flip it out away from the dog. <laughs> Just in case it, it does open up like that. I don't want it near the dog when I flip it. Scissoring at weird angles because I'm <laughs> trying to be biased on the camera so you can get a good look at what I'm doing. Not block it with my body. There we go. Now I like to lift it up and just tidy up the body. I mean, the, the bottom here, not the body, the bottom. Bottom of the foot, get that really nice and tight, nice and tight, nice and neat. There we go. That way, when I put it down, you got a nice round foot. There we go. It's kind of beveled on the bottom, you know, nice round beveled foot. All right, now the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the back is nice and straight. With the hair on the back of the leg there. And I shouldn't jump around, but I see it. <laughs> All right, so. I don't know if you can see it, right? Can you see it? All the hairs are sticking out right there. So what I'm gonna do is lift this leg up here so I can go ahead and get all that hair down in here. 
Get it nice and even. Get it all nice and even and tight. Go. Now we got a different way. Your turn, buddy. Oh, probably can't really see. Yeah, you can turn. There you go. You can turn anyways. Okay. There we go. Make sure there's a nice clean line that highlights that the bend of the knee there, that curve that we want. There we go. Okay. So he likes to turn with me, so I'll just use that against him here. Make sure it's nice and neat down there. Okay. Okay. I'll just turn. There we go. I'll just keep turning. So we get in the turn the direction that we want. Okay. Hey, buddy. There we go. It's like a dance, you know? <laughs> Okay, so it's nice and clean down here. Nice clean line. Oh, I just make some. I just make some dents. Clean it up like that. And see, I can't really get to it, so I'll flip the shears like that. Go and got one last foot. One last leg and foot. Alright. Okay. So now I'm gonna comb all of this down.
get the foot rounded, then the rest of the leg comes pretty easy. So I like to work from the bottom, oh, bottom up. So I actually don't really like these shears. Um, I got them from the uh, like a scissor in the month club I was on, but I didn't really like it. I didn't like how it cut. It also <laughs> it's hard to flip because it has the two um, finger rests on it on, on either side. But I was like, and so I avoided using it. But I was like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm gonna get used to using any shears. I was like, I don't want to get to the point where I'm like. Oh, I can't do a haircut because I can't use those shears. Like, nah. I want to get to the point where no matter what scissors I'm using, I can just pick it up and do the haircut. Because I don't want to rely on shears. I don't want to rely too much on my tools. So that's why I'm using these scissors today, even though I don't really like them. I usually use my silver scissors. But now that I'm using these, getting used to it, it's not bad. It's just, it just cuts a little different than what I'm used to. Yeah, I just, I don't want to get used to using any kind of shears. And even to the point where sometimes if I feel like I'm being a little bit too reliant on the curved shears, I'll bust out my, my straight shears and do an entire haircut with just the straight shears. You know, just, just to make sure that, you know, my skills are sharp. I don't have to rely on any one specific tool, right? I remember when Cesar Milan went to, you know, help a groomer at a shop with aggressive dogs. He asked the groomer, what's, what's the most important tool in your shop? And the, he, the groomer was like, oh, you know, he, I think he said a sports dryer or something, and you know, he was like, no. He was like, oh, my clippers. He was like, nope. He was like, you're the most important tool in your shop. You know, it's you. And I really, I really like that. I kind of stand by that philosophy, you know? We really shouldn't rely too much on the tools. You know, have good tools, of course, and take care of them. You know, I cleaned and oiled these scissors before I started using them, so. Yeah, it's like have good tools and take care of them properly, of course. But I don't like to get to the point where I feel like I'm relying too much on a particular tool or a specific product, you know? Like I want to be able to groom any dog confidently no matter what tools or products are available to me. behavior, <laughs> you know, just work with how he behaves. There we go. There we go. Nice straight line down the, down the legs. Grooming really is an art, you know, if you think about it. The challenge of not just producing good art and sculpting a beautiful image, you know, but we have the added challenge of working with a medium, which is the dog, that moves and has their own feelings about things, you know. And so we have to be able to work with that it's like working with a child, pretty much. 
they kind of lose their interest pretty quickly. You know, their attention <laughs> span is only so much. And so we have to keep them interested somehow, you know, keep them engaged. Now, the trick that I said I'll show you to help get rid of the clipper lines in the coat, I'll show you right now. There we go. Got all four feet rounded. Got the legs trimmed up. Now, I am going to go through with the thinning shears, soften everything up, you know, give it a nice, good finished look. Nice clean finish look. But before I do that, let me show you a little trick to help get rid of the clipper lines. And give it a nice soft look when you're done. There we go. Go, a nice natural tail. So here's a little trick. You get your undercoat rake, right? And this is my more coarse one, it's not so fine. And then you go through the coat and you pull out some more of that dead undercoat, right? And that is almost like an eraser. It's gonna go and erase all these clipper lines and give it a nice soft, Finished look, nice soft fluffy look without clipper lines. Let's go through. There we go. There we go. Now you can see. <laughs> are gone. Isn't that cool? Didn't really get much off, but all right. So now I like I like these thinners to finish with. Do you have any questions? Are you going to be trimming and cutting his nails? Oh, uh, Claudia, I already did. Um, meh, I'll survive. <laughs> Kimberly says, "What a beautiful doll." Awesome. Um, I I already trimmed and filed his nails before I started the haircut. So. That that's all that's all been done already. So let me go the camera here so you can see how I go through and there we go. So I'm just gonna soften everything up, blend it all in. Until the AI 
get better at that than us as well. And then the AI will just start programming themselves. And so there will pretty much be no more human jobs left. Cars will be self-driving. You know, um, you can pro program robots to do surgery, you know, more precise than humans can. But I just think to myself, can you program a robot to do this? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I, I have job security, you know? <laughs> and as a freelance artist, I have consistent work, you know? I have clients. So what more could I ask for, really? I have consistent work. I don't have to go and search for new clients. And even if robots did take over the world <laughs> and took all our jobs, I feel like this is one thing that a robot probably couldn't do. I mean, who knows? I might be wrong. Maybe, maybe one day, you know, robots will be able to groom a dog, do a nice, round, fluffy, teddy bear cut on a nervous dog that likes to move around. Maybe. But, I mean, I really feel like um, it's because of all the years that I spent grooming Leo here, you know, even though he, it does make him nervous and he, he likes to move around and stuff, especially if he gets fidgety with his feet, you know, we know each other now, and he trusts me enough to where he'll let me do it now. And I feel like, I don't know, would a robot be able to do that? Would a robot be able to build rapport and gain a dog's trust? Maybe, right? I guess if you could, if you program a robot proper, like, program a robot to, to be sensitive and, and kind of slow down a little bit, and program a robot to like behave caringly, you know, respectfully with the dog. I, I guess, yeah, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I, I'd like to think that this is gonna be one of the few jobs that will be left for humans to do because a robot really couldn't be programmed to do this. Because this is art, you know? I feel like real art is creative in nature, it's unique, sometimes flawed, you know, it's not always perfect, and it's generous in nature, you know? The artist has to show, be willing to be vulnerable. Um, I think these are all traits that, you know, can't be programmed into a robot. So, I guess it's a weird way of saying, you know, I feel secure in my, in my career. <laughs> I have job security. Well, I hope. Who knows? One day there might be robots that can execute a haircut better than humans could. Work with dogs better than humans could. Maybe. I don't think so, though. But I, I'm wrong often, so, you know, I'm often wrong about things. Even things that I believe strongly in, I've been wrong before. <laughs> so I have to be open to the possibility that I could be wrong again. But I just don't think so. I just don't, you know, I just don't see robots being able to do this. But, you know, they say that robots, um, they can program robotic arms to perform surgery, like surgical tasks, and it's more precise than human hands. So, you know, that might, but the thing is, when the robot's performing surgery, the person's under, they're sleeping, they're still, you know, there's no moving parts. But with the dog grooming, even though you could program a robot to make more precise cuts. The problem is the dogs move around and they're unpredictable, which is why I like to always keep a hand on the dog so I can feel it moving. 
before they, you know, I, before they actually move, like, kind of feel it and anticipate it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't think that robots could do this. You know, this is still an art form, I think. And the arts, I think, are what best left with human hands. Okay. There we go, buddy. Look at the finished haircut. Um, Claudia, oh, sorry, you must it's okay. okay. So let me turn this camera around. So look at Leo now, the round feet. Oh, Leo, look at you, buddy. Look at that. You are all done. The nice round head, right? Nice round feet. And then you can see the legs looking nice and sharp, right? Nice and shaped. We got all the angles in. What is that? Okay, let's just. <laughs> Looking nice. All the clipper lines are gone. See the back leg? Nice and angled, you know? Highlighted the angles. There we go. It looks nice and neat down there. Nice and round feet. Perfect. Oh my goodness, Leo. You look so awesome. Good job, Leo. Good boy. You are all done. Yeah. Oh, I see some hair sticking out. Okay, hold on. Okay, I see some hair sticking out. Yeah, let me see. All right here. There we go. Precision, baby. Precise. Okay. There we go. Awesome. So he is all done. Look at him. Nice. Well, thank you for whoever's still watching. Claudia, Kimberly, Lee, Karen, Chris R. Thanks, guys. But this is Leo. All, all done looking so proud of himself. Look at him. Beautiful, buddy. Good job. Ha <laughs> ha.